Okay, there it is. Remember our world's greatest track cleaning car? This is it. And now we've modified it so it works in both DC and DCC. So how does it work actually? Well, when you put it on the track, so right now I have it set for DC. Let me show you what happens. So I've got down here Tech 2. Okay, power on. I'm going to turn the power up. There we go, the car's lit. See, we got a light. And we can roll this along the track. If the light goes out, we lose power. In DCC, since the power is on and constant, it'll be it'll be just like this right now. We're at full power. DCC, same thing. So how do we do that? How do we make it so that it'll work for both? Well, let me show you. Let's get a close look at this guy. So we roll around, light goes out. That's where the track needs attention. Whether it's a short, in, in DCC, if you can counter short, your system should, it tr should trip the off switch, right? In DC, you'll see some sparks. You'll know there's a short there. All we had to do, on the bottom of this car, the trucks pick up power, then bring all the power right here, and it comes up in some wires here. Now, when you get this car, which I think this is a boxman, and it's pretty neat because it's all metal, we added these weights to make sure it had enough weight to, to really make contact with the track. What we did is we took our, remember our bridge rectifier we just used in the power pack? Right there. We put a bridge rectifier right there. We took two of the wires coming up from from below and we connected those onto the bridge rectifier on those squiggles and it doesn't matter which one either one is fine and because this is an incandescent light which in DC you can switch directions and the light still goes we take the two wires that go into the spotlight we put those on the plus and minus and it doesn't matter which one it doesn't make any difference that is all there is to it so now if we put this on a DCC track with the power on, the bridge rectifier will turn that will will turn the power into straight DC and send it into the light. Then we can roll it around. And that is how we will detect if we need to clean or not. A lot of times we just assume that all the track is dirty and let's just clean it all. And that takes a lot of work, especially as your layout gets bigger and bigger. That's a lot of work. With this, it's way easier. And it doesn't just detect dirty track. It detects problems with orphaned rails on switches. Sometimes on a switch, you put it in, and if it's got plastic rail joiners on one of the ends, one of the rails might be orphaned. No power at all. And usually you gotta put a you gotta put a feeder wire there. This is this is what we'll tell you. Then when it's time to clean track, you use some elbow grease. Because there ain't no cleaner in the world that will beat elbow grease every time. Every time, elbow grease is what it takes. And this is how we detect where we're going to use that elbow grease. It's that simple. And there are a lot of these kinds of cars. There's a, one that's got like a little caboose and sort of a flat car with this spotlight on it. You see these at train shows all the time. And... They're cheap, you can pick them up, or you could make one yourself. You could do this with passenger car trucks that come this way and put that on a flat car, bring your wires up, and put a light right here. You could use an LED to do that. The, the good thing about using an incandescent light is if the power goes low, it'll get dimmer. Some LEDs, they will not dim enough for you to actually tell the incandescent one, it will. And that's it. That's all there is to it. That's the best track cleaning car ever. Because if you know your track cleaning car is good, 
then you can move it around and detect spots that need cleaning. That's all there is to it. Nothing beats that.